I thought I'd do a really quick video today on how I vapor smooth my 3D printed parts. I use uh, ABS and acetone and I do a cold vapor smoothing. Now this here is a part before. You can see the ridges and lines in it. And this is part after. And uh, let me, sorry, let me grab a hold of that. Show you. That's pretty smooth. Um, you know, there's still a few artifacts because there's bumps on the part that are a little too big to get out. But in any case, it works. Okay. So what I do is I take a container that's between six and ten times the size of the part. Why? Uh, because if you make it much larger, if you make it smaller, you run the risk of the paper towel that's going to be in it uh, touching. If you make it much larger, then it's going, you might have to add acetone a few times. Uh, so, because it has to fill a greater space. So here's what happens. Acetone uh, becomes vapor at room temperature. Okay, gas is off at room temperature. It's heavier than air and so if we take a part like this and we put it in the bottom here and we put I what I have here is just a little sheet of aluminum that I had and I put a magnet on both sides with a paper towel in it and then I'm going to soak that in acetone and then place it on top now I usually will just set something on it too for a little bit of weight just to keep the seal going and that's plenty you know it doesn't have to be anything spectacular now normally I like to also offset the part off the bottom just a little bit uh, the reason for this is it wouldn't make that much difference on this model but if you have a model that's got a fairly large bottom base <clears throat> especially if it's thin then if you place this on there, the bottom won't get smooth. Now you think, well, that's no big deal. I don't care about the bottom. Except that when it dries, it's going to contract. And it will cause these thin edges to curl, to bend. So, to warp, if you will. So it's not a good idea. You have to smooth it all the way around. Now, what I normally do is I'll stick a thumbtack in there. Or I will take a smaller object, you know, a 3D printed object, preferably not ABS, because then it will just glue to the surface. But I'll take a PLA part or, or a, um, like I said, a thumbtack or something and lay it down in the bottom and just rest this on it. Um, and then when you put this down there, you put in as much acetone on the paper towel as it will hold. In other words, when it starts leaking off, you know, you want to move it around and get the acetone distributed. You want the entire paper towel to be soaked up. Now, if you, you, if you use a much larger container, you want a larger piece of paper towel as well. So it'll hold more uh, acetone. But what I do is I get this as wet as I can until it won't drip off. Okay, just enough so it doesn't drip, but as much as it'll hold other than that. And then you simply place it over the top and put a weight on it. Time. Well, the time can be really tricky. My experience on a part like this is about two hours. Uh, and you can check on it, of course. But what you want to see, you can, if you have a clear container, if you use this or like, glass vase or jar that you can see through then you can look at it and you can shine a light on it and you can see whether or not you got the glossy finish without any ribs in it and so that's when it's done now the next trick when it's done what i usually do is i put this on there um when i'm gonna go you know get ready for bed take a shower or whatever and then I'll wait, like I said, about two hours. Then what I do is I pull the top off. I will wave it across like that. Because like I said, the acetone vapors are inside here. And they're heavier than air. So I'll 
I'll do a wave job over it, even just blow into it to get the acetone vapors out. Then I'll let this set overnight. The reason we do that is because when the part uh, is smoothed like this at first, the top layer is actually sticky. It's kind of gooey. And you, if you reach down and just grab it, you're going to end up with fingerprints in it and you're going to stick to it. And it's just not good. Even if it doesn't, I've had parts before that I took them out after like two hours and they felt fine. And then I squeezed it a little bit. When I squeezed it, it, it squished and uh, left a mark, left my fingerprint and left a flat side on one or flat spot on one side. So that's it. I just did this one last night, pulled it out this morning. This is the second one I'm going to do now. But you've got the idea, you've got the results. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, a like on this video, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Oh, and here's a little surprise. I may be doing a tutorial on this soon. This is one of these that has been copper plated. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments so I'll know that there's an interest in this. I'll go through the entire steps from start to finish on how I got this copper plated. I've only got the uh, the head um, smooth, or I should say um, buffed out so you can see the glossiness. Down here is the raw copper that's on it. It is a thick plating. Um, I've actually sanded spots of this and it doesn't go through. So this is a very interesting thing that I've done here. And uh, after you copper plate it, of course, you can then nickel plate it, tin plate it, silver plate it, gold plate it, whatever you want to do. Uh, chrome is not really something you're going to be able to do because that takes very hazardous chemicals that are regulated by most states. Um, okay. So, if you want to see the copper plating, let me know. And by the way, the reason that I'm smoothing these is so that when I plate them, I can get a smoother uh, copper on there, hopefully. All right. If you want to see that, let me know. Thanks.